In my previous video, I demonstrated how to work a foundation chain. And now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to work the first row of single crochet into this foundation chain. You'll notice here that I have a couple of different tools here. I have some stitch markers and a tapestry needle. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use those as you work across the first row. First of all, what you uh, need to understand is that there, is many there are many different ways to work into the foundation chain. I'm going to be demonstrating how to work into the foundation chain that the pattern suggests. And in order to do that, we're going to just need to identify a couple of, of just identify a couple of bits about the foundation chain here. You'll notice that the stitches here, the, these chains have a nice little V shape or a teardrop shape. We're going to take those and we're going to put those all flat on the tabletop right here. And what you'll notice is on the other side, the underside of the foundation chain, there's a series of little bumps. This is referred to as the back bump, and this is where we're going to be inserting our hook. I'm just using the tapestry needle that I have here to just demonstrate exactly where these little bumps are located. And if you notice, you'll see that it's like a little spine kind of down the center back of this particular foundation chain. If you find that you've worked your foundation chain quite tightly, it will help immensely to use a tapestry needle to loosen up these little bumps to help your to help help ease your crochet hook into those bumps. One way to identify these bumps as well is to refer to the little V's on the right side. This is what I will refer to as the first chain from hook, and that this right here is the second chain from hook. When you're working the single crochet, when you're working your first row of single crochet, you will always work into the second chain from hook. So I've identified that second chain, and now when I turn the chain over, I'll be able to see that this right here is that bump that's associated with that second chain. What I'll do now is I'm going to take the tip of my hook and I'm going to insert it underneath that back bump, like so. So now what I have on my hook is I have the loop that I began with and I have the back bump here that is on my crochet hook. First what I'll do is I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull up a loop through the back bump only. So now I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over again, and I'm going to pull through two. All right, you need to think of this as coming as the t as though the top of the chain has come up and is now working from right to left. I will now take my stitch marker and I will now insert it under the top of this, t this stitch right here. Okay. Lock that in place so that it won't come, won't accidentally come out. And now I skipped the first chain and worked the first single crochet into the second bump from hook. Now I will work a single crochet into each following bump. So I will insert my hook Underneath the bump, I have a loop that is on my hook that I began with. I have the bump that is now on my hook. I yarn over and pull up a loop. Two loops on the hook. Yarn over once more and pull through two. And this is now the top of my second stitch. And I'll continue in this fashion. I'm going to insert the tip of the hook underneath the bump, yarn over, and pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two. And I can give my stitches a bit of a tug in either direction. I can pull on the foundation chain with my left, 
give that a tug with my right to straighten up the stitches. So I'm going to insert under the bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two. I'll work one more stitch and then we'll take a look at the results. Inserting under the bump again. If it feels a bit tight, take your tapestry needle, loosen that bump up slightly, and now you're ready to insert the hook underneath the bump. I have the loop I began with, the bump that's on my hook, and the hook bump that's now on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop only through the bump, two loops on the hook, yarn over again, and pull through two. So now what I can do is I can take a look at the, the stitches that I've made so far. So what I have here is I have one, two, three, four, five stitches. The top of every stitch has a teardrop or a little V shape. You'll also see that there's a little V shape here on the side. That's also part of the stitch right there. Now I'll continue inserting under the bump. The next bump, yarn over, pull up a loop just through the bump, yarn over again, and pull through two. I'm going to feed out some more yarn. I'm going to insert under the next bump, yarn over, and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And again, if I find that this bump right here is a bit tight, I can just insert the tip of my tapestry needle fixing tool. Um, any small pointed item will help loosen that so that it's easier to insert the tip of your crochet hook. You're in over. Pull up a loop. You're in over. Go through two. Insert under the back bump. You're in over. Pulling just through the bump, yarn over again, pull through two. And I'll continue like this to the end of my foundation shake. Inserting under the bump. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over again and pull through two. Under the bump, yarn over, pull up a loop just through the bump. Yarn over and pull through two. Boom. I'm going to feed out some more of the working yarn. Yarn over, pull up a loop just through the bump. Yarn over once more and pull through two. I could get us a little tug and just get a sense of my of how my progress is. Okay. Insert, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two. Now if I look here at the remaining bumps that are left, this can give you a sense of the count how many I have left so far. So I have one, two, three, Four. And then this one right here, right next to the slip knot, this is the last bump you do need to work under that one. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, and pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Insert, yarn over, and pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull through two. Inserting under that bump, yarn over. And you pull through two. Insert, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull through two. And now we have come to this last stitch. It's important not to uh, forget to work into the last chain. You can turn this over to see that this is the last chain right here. This is that initial slip knot that was made. This right here is the bump. 
So I'm going to insert my hook underneath the bump, yarn over again, pulling through just the bump, yarn over, and pull through two. All right. And so now I have completed my row, my first row of single crochet. And I can give this a little tug to straighten it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully count the V's that are the top of the stitches. So I like to count them by two. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I will go on ahead and use a different stitch marker to mark this 20th stitch. And we'll mark it like so. Now I begin with 21 chains. Why do I only have 20 single crochets? And the reason come is because at the very beginning, you didn't work into the first chain from the hook. You worked into the second chain from hook. The first chain from hook becomes what's called the turning chain. And you can see it right here. This turning chain merely acts as a step up to help the edges of your crochet remain nice and even and straight. It can be a bit tricky to identify the turning chain. That's why it is quite important to put a stitch marker in to this first stitch so that you don't inadvertently mistake the, the turning chain for a stitch. The turning chain in this particular circumstance is never considered a stitch and we'll just disregard it. It's merely for the actual structural building of the single crochet. All right, so I have 20 single crochets now that I've worked across row one. And in my next video, I will talk about turning your work and working across into the row number two.